This is my new Baofeng radio. It's a K5 Plus, and I really love it, except for the harmonic levels seem to be high, especially on the V, or well, mainly on the VHF band. They seem to be okay on the 440 band. So um, I'm going to do, hopefully, a teardown and see if I can figure out what's going on. First, I'm going to pull the battery out, of course, and uh, take the antenna off, and then we'll see how far we can get. So here it is with the battery off. I had to press very hard on this little button here and then pull the battery off. So it looks like we have these kind of fasteners. I'll have to find a tool for that. And there's, uh, I think, one of those up there too. So on the left is the antenna, and on the right is the, uh, the knob for volume, and I've pulled it off. You can see the fastener there. And I'll do the one on the left with my needle nose pliers. So I got both of those off, and uh, I'm still looking for a tool for this guy. Apparently, it's smaller than a T10 Torx. Made a quick trip to Home Depot and picked up this iFixit toolkit. Very nice. And I got the screws out without any trouble, four screws. Let's see what happens next. Almost lost this spring. It fell on the floor when I turned the thing upside down. So this seems to be the way in. It's a little uh, flathead screwdriver and I'm prying it up. Let's see if we can pull the back panel off. Once again, I've already removed the fasteners for the volume knob and the antenna. There were a couple of nuts I had to take off. I don't think there's anything else. Let's see if I can get this thing apart. All right, looks like there's a flex connector in there. I have to be careful of. It goes from there to there. Okay, without messing with the flex connector, I was able to pull this back. And there's plenty of room on the flex connector. Looks like there's a speaker wire down there that also has to get disconnected. So let's survey this. The display is here, of course, and the LED is right there. Didn't have to do anything special to uh, pull this apart. Just slips into this little tunnel, I guess. A pretty purple circuit board on this side. The wires are long enough that the speaker is still connected. I didn't have to mess with that. Let's flip it over on its side and look at it. Ah, obviously, these are the side buttons, the push to talk button, and so forth. And I'm not really interested in the control board here, so. I'm going to pull this cable probably from this end over here so that I can then take this board off. It looks like there are a number of small Phillips that hold it on. So these little ribbon cables are pretty much like what we see on laptop computers and so forth. And I'm just pushing it from the side here with the Phillips screwdriver so I don't mar the board. And then I'll push on the other side and I think it'll free it up. Yep, there we are. Just pulled back and then I was able to pull the ribbon out. Time to do the PCB mounting screws next. There's one here. And there's one here. That is not one. That is a variable capacitor. So I don't want to mess with that or that one. And these guys are in pretty tight. So I'm using a much bigger diameter handle tool. So this one for the LCD panel did need to come out, it looks like. Not a problem. I think I got them all out, so I'm going to try to pry this board out now. Probably pulling up from this side. We'll see. Nope, not coming up yet, but um, if when I look in here, it looks like there's one more screw under the LCD panel, so I'll have to pull it up and out of the way enough to get to that. So the bottom's coming up. But the top is still held over here. Maybe I have to wiggle the shafts through or something like that. Stand by. Well, bummer. It's still not coming out. But it is coming up enough I'll be able to look on the other side of the board, at least. And, um, word of warning, the two screws that hold the RF connector on are smaller than the main group of screws that we just pulled from the board. So keep them separate. Oh, good news. It just came out. It was just being stubborn. 
So that's excellent, and there is what I wanted to get to, all of the circuitry. So we're going to take some photos of that. Uh, one last thing, the heat sink is all of this metal, plus there's some shielding, but the power transistors must be under these little blocks of what look like foam, but are thermally conductive, no doubt. Here's what's under the thermal conducting paths. These are the PAs here and here. Oops, I forgot to photograph this side of the board. So let's take a look at that. I think these two cans might be covering the low noise amplifiers for the VHF and UHF, but I'm not sure. That's just a guess. And sadly, I uh, wasn't able to pull the lid off. I tried to get a knife under here. It didn't seem to want to come off. So perhaps it's soldered along that edge there. So I think I'm just going to leave it here. Uh, I hope this is valuable to somebody. I may um, do a little bit of looking at the other side of the board where the filters are. In this area. And this area up here. And might put something together for another video there. Thanks for watching.